Yeah, because we do uh, uh, the other show. What's it called with uh, Joey and and Zach and. So what is it? They're just like having Gallagher moments. <laughs> uh, they um, they get mad at uh, at the teams that then they they talk about the bets that they're winning and losing and and people get money to do dumb shit. Like uh, last time, they had to do um, uh, a, a double shot of jalapeno juice. <laughs> a double shot of jalapeno juice. Yeah. What kind of jal- like uh, they had this with them? No, no, no. I got it from my fridge. And oh, you were that, like, they this ate is a, what I have. Uh, yeah, and they ate an onion. And then they wanted me to do it, and I'm like, no, I produce the show. I don't, I don't. I don't do the antics. I just make fun of you guys. Yeah, yeah. What's the grossest thing they've done so far? Make out? No, Joey did birthday yoga pose with basically his asshole just all up as he's <laughs> nice. on his back. And then uh, as Zach saying happy birthday, so it was kind of creepy. And I was, was hoping he? my family didn't walk in. Uh, was he clothed? Yeah, he was clothed. Oh, okay. They all, it was only 10 bucks, but the stuff they'll do for 10 bucks. <laughs> As Joey that. gets drunker in the show, he does stupider and stupider shit. And what's it called again? Uh, uh, the Most Valuable Player Haters. Yes. I drop in on it, and then I'm like, oh, can they see me? And then I get out really quickly. No, we can't see who's, who's who are the people. We just know how many. Oh, okay. We're Lots. on. Lots. We're on. We're on. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Toxic Actually with me. And I have a super fun guest today. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, okay. I like skateboarding. I've been skateboarding since maybe 99 or 2000. I've been doing stand-up as, since 2012. Nice. I did stand up my first seven years in Houston, and now I've been doing stand up in Austin two years. Cool. Any uh, social media you want to plug? Uh, Follow you on Instagram? I've got an Instagram at uh, Comedy and Skateboarding. Nice. Somehow I managed to snag that. <laughs> That's awesome. I, are there a lot of comedians in skate? Didn't you do a show with like a, a bunch of skateboarders? Yes, all skateboarder lineup. It was Mike Weeb, Joe Stats, uh, Andrew Wagner. Drew Woods. Cool. Did you guys do any tricks on stage or? No, we didn't want to do that. <laughs> I remember Bam Margera rolled off the stage at the 2003 MT Music Awards uh-huh. and people clowned the fuck out of him. Really? They stage, made fun of him? Stages and skateboarding, it's so tacky together. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're like, we do not do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, cool, cool, cool. Thank you for being on uh, the podcast. Uh, it's We talk about movies that Mm -hmm. have these relationships that are not great and sort of make fun of them a little bit. It's a lot of fun. And I like it when uh, comedians come on because uh, I feel like it's easier for us to trash these films. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Josh is finding you and there you are. There you are. (laughs) So we want everybody to like and follow uh, Warren Wright uh, all the way from Austin, formerly from Houston. Houston's dope. I like Houston a lot. Oh, yes. I was just there the other day, and I've got three shows in Houston coming up across the next couple of months. Oh, hell yeah. Anything you want to plug? Uh, December 8th, I'll be at King's Court in Houston, Texas. I think that's in East Downtown. Uh, January the 29th, I'll be at Best of the Secret Group. Nice. And I'll also be at Look But Don't Touch at that, uh, I think it's at an art gallery somewhere. Oh, cool, cool, cool. I think I've seen those flyers. Nice. All right. Um, all right, well, let's get into the the first movie. Um, I think that the first movie is Zombieland, is it? Mm-hmm. Yes, Zombieland, yep. uh, which, how do you feel about the Zombieland as, like, the series? Like, what do you, how do you feel about that? Uh, you know, when I was a kid and I was about 10 years old when Running Zombies came out and when <laughs> Running Zombies first came out, I thought, oh, that's whack. A zombie's supposed to be slow, you know? Yeah. Like but stairs lately it's grown to, on like, me. Like, yeah. Stairs are supposed to like be like the ultimate safe haven from like the zombies yeah. from back in the day. And then suddenly they got fast. Oh, yeah. I love how zombies are an international thing, too. They're really big in Korean culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots of European zombie movies. I've seen some good Dutch ones, uh, good yeah. German, French ones. Dude, I love a good zombie movie. I used to have a very vivid zombie dreams. Where oh, I, yes. Where like I bite them back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I'm like, how am I not dying? (laughs) Oh, yeah. I've gotten bit and then shot myself in the head and survived and just walking around with a bullet hole. I've gone on zombie killing sprees. What's a Dutch movie like? Are they like even gorier? 
I feel like they it was would really be like, good. It was called What We Become. What We Become. Yeah. A Dutch movie. I feel like they would uh, really nail the blood splatter. Yeah. Movies are getting better about like blood splatter. Not that I know what blood splatter looks like, but according to Dexter. Cool. Zombieland. So it's the apocalypse and we've got that guy that was in the social network. What is Jesse it? Eisenberg. Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah. We got Jesse Eisenberg who is like holed up, I think, in his apartment at first. Yeah. And like in love with the neighbor. Right. There was that whole thing with the neighbor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she turns out to be a zombie, which like same whatever. And then he uh, meets uh the two i guess not sisters i don't know if they, i don't remember if they're sisters i think they were yeah but he meets them and then he like falls in love with the girl and uh they have to kill a bunch of zombies on the way right mm-hmm. they meet bill murray so they meet by getting robbed by her emma stone robs them in yeah. a grocery store and she's uh She's pretty, I like her. I didn't think I liked her, but I like her as like an actress. Emma yeah. Stone, like, uh, she's like, she's been in like everything, I guess. Mm-hmm. I thought she was kind of annoying. Um, I thought it was weird that they seem like an unlikely pair, but then I really don't understand how they fell in love, but it is the end of the world. I think you make yeah. compromises at the end of the world. Oh yeah. Well, it's either him or Woody Harrelson. Yeah. Or he waits for, uh, the little girl to grow up. Which, so he's going to groom her during yeah. the apocalypse? I feel like that's what a lot of people are doing during the apocalypse. Like in apocalypse movies, they do bad things. And I'm just saying, yeah. he wouldn't be unlike most teachers. Oh, my God. <laughs> Not most, but like a big percentage. Zombieland teachers. seemed to be a high percentage of people were undead. I don't think they really see any other people. In that one, no. In the next one, they do. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they see anybody aside from Bill Murray and then like playing a joke on him, which is hilarious. I love when he dies. That's like my favorite part when they're like any regrets. And he's like, Garfield. (laughs) (laughs) That was a good movie. That that was a good time. I remember a lot of good comedies came out maybe like 2008, nine, 10. Yeah. Nowadays, the dialogue in comedies is fucking obnoxious. Like they're always using memes and saying, you know, like party foul is, was that even a thing? Like, this is why we can't have nice things. And, like, but, nowadays, the comedy people just sound like memes. Like That's true. I could see that. Or, like, catchphrases, or they create catchphrases. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they also, I don't know. I was going to say, and they also are always like, hey, well, let's get fucked up beyond all capability. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I feel like uh, movies are more and more into drugs, and I'm kind of here for it. You know, like, good for you. I watched something the other day, and they did a bunch of drugs like in public and I was like, whoa, <laughs> like, I feel like you shouldn't take certain drugs in public, you know, like, yeah. uh, mushrooms. I'm not sure should be how in public, uh, mushrooms and skateboarding go together. Yeah. But that's like a solo activity, right? Well, yeah. I really don't know. Like how is skateboarding? Do you like talk to, do you guys talk to each other? Do you go skateboarding with people? Uh, sometimes, but, uh, because there's so many millions and millions of skateboarders, like there's maybe 10 million of us in America, like that ranges all types of personalities. Like some people are really sweet, but some people, there might be evangelical racist skateboarders out there, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> nice. some people are really warm and friendly and some people are really hostile and standoffish and everything you say is stupid. And <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. That sucks. So you just kind of have to like smile and nod. Yeah. House Park has everything and everything between. Like, that's one of the most diverse places you can go in Austin. Do you guys like compliment each other? Like how, how are the interactions? Uh, I don't know. Good style is something that's really evident and beautiful and something that you have to appreciate. Like, cool. So it's kind of like a cadence. Somebody's Uh, style is like somebody's comedy's cadence. It's like the way they deliver the joke. Oh, yeah, I could tell a lot about somebody by how they skateboard. Or, like, I could tell what kind of background somebody comes from, what kind of music they're likely. Like, I could see a, a dude do a trick, and I'd be like, you know what? I bet he's a big Mac DeMarco fan. Or, like, I could see another dude do a trick, and I'd be like, you know what? I bet get, that guy's favorite band is Gangstar. Like, <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. So it's like watching a comedian be like, oh, it's Nate Borgetsky. Oh, that's yeah. Louis C.K. Oh, yeah. Dave Chappelle. Oh, Paul Mooney. I will, uh, there's Todd Berry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
So That's if there's cool. 10 million skateboarders, yeah. how many comedians are there? Ew. I've heard anything between like 10,000 and 100,000, but... uh if that you talk about like income that's made by comedy, like people that In say I'm, I'm a professional or whatever, like that money can be subjective because some of those people have money coming from an outside source, like they're on their parents' tit and, yeah. you know, they or just get like the $20 from they're the They're making the money or, from whatever show or whatever writing thing yeah. that they're doing instead of stand-up itself. But like if you're like living in a car and like making a little money off a of comedy, is that making a living off a of comedy? Like it's so tricky and the parameters are so weird. Like, if you can live in your car, then yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you had like no responsibilities and like uh, and your car was like no, take your kit. Listen, I'm. If this doesn't work, we're getting we're getting on the road. We're guys. getting one of those nice RVs. The kids are gonna start singing in a Tejano band. And <laughs> no, they're gonna join improv classes. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, don't follow in Daddy's footsteps. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, going back to Zombie Land because I just thought of something. Have you ever uh, like somebody that was like you felt out of your league and put it to both of you guys. Have you ever like somebody out of your league and how'd that go? Oh, fuck. Yeah. Out of the league all the time. All the time. Yeah. Can you, can you think of a, a specific time that you were like, Oh, this is going to go badly. Uh, yeah. I, I was with this rich kid and like, someone <laughs> that really popular, really big web presence, you know, loved by many, but like notorious, like, Oh no. Like, like I've heard, like, like as when I breathe her name to people, they were like, watch out for her or whatever, or they would <laughs> burst out laughing or whatever, or, oh, or she likes you. What the fuck? Or like, <laughs> yeah. I could always tell when they're about to leave because one day like text messages just don't get returned anymore or read or whatever. And yeah, yeah. the ghosting is very popular. It feels like, yeah, like, it's just easier, <laughs> just easier to be like, Bye. Meh. yeah. Really? Just cut it. Isn't I'm not, I'm not, I wish they would do that instead because it's, by not saying anything, it kind of sends a message. But like, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's actually much more polite than listen. You suck. I yeah. don't want to be with or you. Or just like, how about like a genuine like, I'm not interested. Well, that's because your generation needs closure. My generation, your generation, you're in the same generation, aren't you? But people don't know. I'll that. be 30 in three months. <laughs> <laughs> now they do. We're the same. <laughs> Josh is a millennial. I don't know why he's a old millennial. How, how old yeah. are we? I'm 29. How old are we? Uh, I'm 38. Oh, yeah. that's my girlfriend's age. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, I've uh, definitely out of my league. Uh, out of your league who? all the time yeah um shoot for the stars yeah you know what i mean land gonna, on the moon you're gonna get told no a lot a lot and mm. not just like beautiful you got to go for status too where are they status what do you they mean gotta have some status too like he's like you said uh rich girl right she had wildly some popular and she had some status popular, rich and girl. the fact that you have the audacity to even try with me like what are you thinking it's like yeah i'm trying with you who gives a fuck mm. and you shoot your shot so you just like you're constantly fishing oh 100 percent. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, with a bobber exhausting. and everything you just throw it out there i'm like all right wait. i gotta change this lure really quick <laughs> and what what's what sucks about that is that because if you're messing with somebody with status and that means that the eyes will will be on you and like now yeah. people are like who the fuck are you why are you sitting at this table or like <laughs> very much so yeah and then you become like uh jennifer lopez and uh ben affleck remember yeah. the the popularity destroyed them i don't know if you guys know that benifer yeah the benifer <laughs> aren't they back together they're back together now because they're stronger individuals <laughs> yeah i'm just kidding exactly yeah they're stronger but like back then you don't remember everybody was obsessed with them i was so sick she of knew she them. wanted to retire with ben she yeah. knew when she was done collecting all her rings from all her championships <laughs> she was going to come back she to like the Thanos. franchise team yeah ben you know yeah. what i mean she's yeah. team ben yeah uh, or she's just going back to her ex. She's going back to her dating pool. Uh, People go back to what they know. Ugh. Yeah. I don't think so. I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that open wound. 
Hopefully I feel like apologize. that hurt a lot. I feel like you didn't even consider my feelings and I yeah. thought we were friends. I'm not going back to my or ex. What's, what's worse is when they tell you, oh man, we're going to be such great friends. I like you. This is fun or whatever. And then that's like, no, no, man, she's gone in seven days. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. I would rather, I think, I, I don't know. I don't like the feeling of being ghosted. Uh, I don't, I don't like, I don't like it as like a genuine feeling, but I guess my generation does want closure. Like I would rather have the like, uh, I'm not in you. Like give it to me, give it, slap me in the face with your words. And then, mm. and then I'm like, oh, okay, you're dead to me. <laughs> I don't think it's just millennials. I think people need closure who have some type of abandonment issues. Me. Like, so like, but anyway, like, you know what I mean? Even like, don't leave, don't, we're going to leave you. Yeah. Hurry up. We're going to leave you when they do that. I stay so, in abandonment issues. So like, you want the I closure versus yeah. a parent who's constantly on you all the time and always in your business and knows your relationships and everything. And then they're like, all right, get, I just want, I just want you to leave me alone. Just if you could ghost me, that'd be great. Ugh. Ugh. Ghosting. I feel like ghosting is weird. I feel like I've always liked people that are like. I've felt out of my league, but I often don't pursue it. I'll just be yeah. like, I'll just be like, hmm, I like them in my head. I don't ever pursue it. Is that weird? Does that mean I'm an, I don't try? I mean, I have a pretty intense dislike of myself, but maybe somewhere deep down, part of me thinks of me as being maybe worthy as fr of affection of somebody, you know, like, I can do stand up really good. I can, I mean, have you seen my 360 flips? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 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 I guess it is about, it does boil down to self-worth. Damn. I'm doing yoga right now. And all <laughs> they do is like, try to say like, uh, positive things, you know, <laughs> they're like, listen to your breath. Know that you are worthy. All right. Take a deep today. The girl goes, she had a Freudian slip. She was, she was going through it. She goes, I want you to take a deep breath and then dive into child support pose <laughs> which is not a pose uh it's called child's pose yeah. <laughs> and then she was like um <laughs> i was like i started laughing you know so weird I, but that is the fetal position i think too so like <laughs> i was like that really for men the child support pose is <laughs> is the fetal it position. is the fetal position yeah so i was like oh she's not wrong um somebody ought to invent a non-secular yoga <laughs> Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I think that it's not supposed to be religion, but it definitely feels like, uh, the meditation aspect of it, the end zombie land. Yeah. I should go <laughs> after my dreams. I should, uh, pursue men, hit on men constantly. I don't know. I think if I was robbed by a woman at shotgun point, I probably wouldn't be romantically interested in her. I Good think I'd maybe point. find a different one. Yeah. Yeah, like, like, oh, I've got such a hard on for the woman that stole my shotguns. Like, <laughs> it's actually you have a hard on for a woman who's the only one I've seen my age. Yeah, <laughs> that, many, that's true. In many yeah. years, I did yeah. like. Did you guys see the second one, Zombie Land Two? Did you see? Yeah, that? I did. Uh, I did like how when uh, spoiler alert, he and Emma Stone break up, and he sees like another woman that he bangs her. I really <laughs> did like that. Uh, I was like, oh, good for him. No. That's sort of like. Who did you blame yeah. for that? Did you blame Emma? Or were they on a break? Uh, they were broken up, but still, I feel like, okay, so I feel like when you break up with someone, if you don't want to get back together, you fuck someone else. You know mm. what I mean? Like you, inst you like, if you don't want to get back together, you should go and immediately like start soiling your oats or whatever. Um, Human remember? nature. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like take, take care of you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like, and then if that person forgives you, I think that that's stupid. Oh, I uh, thought you were going to say, I think that that's love. No, oh. no, 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 no. I think that's stupid. I think that's toxic. Like, I think that's like, uh, setting yourself up for punishment the next few months. You know what I mean? Or years where like, they're going to throw it back in your face. Cause people are, I don't know if you know yeah. this, people are possessive. Of, yeah. of what they think of that uh, they can lose. <laughs> I don't like that it. shit is fucking creepy. Toxic fucking monogamy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I am so special that you are to have sex with me and to be alone. <laughs> like it's such a funny concept. <laughs> yeah. Well, some people don't like to share. <laughs> it's about sharing. You know, like, uh, sometimes I'm weird about my food too. <laughs> <laughs> so are you in an open relationship? Yeah. Well, that's cool. How's that? How's that been going? Oh, fine. 
But I work 60 hours a week. I don't have a lot of energy for open relationships sometimes. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> you're like, uh, I don't have time. Yeah. Well, at least you're open to it. I feel like that's the trend. Yeah. That's like super popular. Who am right I now. to tell somebody who they can and ha can't have sex with? Like, am I the fucking king of Siam? Like, Well, you don't have control over multiple women. So, no, you are not the king. <laughs> 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 so, but it sounds like i mean i think people are comfortable with the relationships that they they want or set forth for them yeah. uh, so as long as you both are happy and mm -hmm. whoever else that sounds good josh can't share no i don't know i'm very much the king of <laughs> whatever <laughs> yeah i do My wife's but <laughs> but also she's possess possessive as as well that's good. So you guys are like both in a very toxic relationship. Yes. But no. there's parts of relationships. You cook dinners you together. You could go see movies together, make yeah. fun plans. Like, yeah, I do like activities with other people. That's yeah. fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I, I hang out with a bunch of men too many hours a week. I do do that. So, but you hang out with your wife too. You do like date night and you practice monogamy with each other <laughs> i guess we don't say are you ready to practice monogamy <laughs> are you ready for all this monogamy filthy, like, <laughs> you ready for the big m baby <laughs> me and you, you ready to get monogamized <laughs> we're gonna hit the big m oh okay never mind uh i'm glad that you know you're super happy josh jesus christ uh i i whatever that's the only choice i have Good for you. Yeah, I was super <laughs> downer. I feel like everybody's breaking up no. uh, around. Uh, I think it's the pandemic. I was reading something recently or even my own like situation. I remember like I was uh, I'm recently like single or whatever. And I had said uh, when I first brought up the idea of no longer continuing the relationship, uh, he was like, uh, it's not it's not us. Like everybody's going through this. It's the pandemic. No. <laughs> I was like, what? Uh, oh, that was funny. Uh, but I have been reading about it. A lot of people are Ooh. blaming it on the pandemic. What, what would be the benefits for Tori to have an open relationship? Ooh. What would you say the best benefits are? What are the best benefits? Well, uh, you know, like we're not guaranteed tomorrow, you know, like the leaders of the world are so fucking unstable and they're getting more and more unstable. Like they could push that button and our ass is gone tomorrow. Like, we only have one life. Yeah, exactly. There's Yolo. no afterlife where we can go hang out with our peeps. You I know? do believe like, that. I actually do believe that. I don't know. I don't believe in an afterlife. That's a pretty yeah. good argument. This is all we have. Why not everyone? <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> I'm a believer. <laughs> oh. You should put your number when you edit it. Yeah. Uh, yeah for, so for ideological reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and also, I think we should just like start trying to get me actively late on the show. I think that's a good segue. Can, we'll have callers. We'll do callers who call, call in. in and give me your best pitch. And it's like, uh, and then everybody's like, uh, and you got to answer every call. You want to take Hi. a walk in the woods? <laughs> I know, right? Hi. I'll pick you up on the bus. Damn. Somebody sent me that message one time. They were like, Hey, do you want to hook up? I have a car. And I was like, what? <laughs> wow. That's your line. I have a car. Well, the for, cars are very important. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, you know, there's a lot of people who don't have them. So that is a benefit. Yeah, it is. Uh, that is a pain I, in the ass. I no, thank you. I didn't think of, I didn't think, oh, wow, you has a car. I just thought, how is this guy? This is so weird. What a weird, uh, what a weird uh, hook. Well, yeah, Being the friend with the cars, what got me into stand up because I was hanging around so many pieces of shit that they all <laughs> had no cars. And so like. That made me something special. I've had a car, but it's like people didn't care about me outside of that. And like I found randomly stand up at a tea house one day and and just jumped into that. Yeah, I I didn't have a car for a while and it was pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna admit. I do okay. Maybe the guy with the car sounds pretty cool now, but like that was like four years ago. <laughs> uh, and I was like, what? Good for you, bro. I have a car too. <laughs> Uh, that's a good segue into the next movie, which I read this book. Yeah. Uh, and I loved it. And the book is completely different from the movie. It's kind of a bummer, but I still like the movie. Uh, the movie is called Warm Bodies. Oh yeah. 
And then what's cool about us talking about these warm movies. Warm bodies? Warm bodies, yeah. Oh, warm bodies. Yeah, no, war and bodies. Josh's <laughs> porn name is war, war and bodies. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. this chick is beautiful. What was her name? I don't remember, oh. but I haven't seen her in anything in a while. Yeah, so I read this book and I was really excited about it. Uh, yeah. Because I really like... Uh, I don't know. I like zombies. And the I books like, are good. Yeah. And I like, uh, usually the book's better. Um, and in this case, what is super different about it is that it was like, they made him younger. Like mm -hmm. they're obviously like younger and hipper. Um, and like they changed his, his main outfit. Like he's supposed to be wearing like a suit essentially. Like he's like a business guy mm -hmm. and that's like his whole stick or whatever. But for the most part, like I get it. They made it more like lebby Debby and like, um, hip mm -hmm. i guess you know um but i really like the language because he was so sarcastic it was like a male writer i like it when male writers are like super sarcastic and like it was it was super cool i like this movie because it's like supernatural and like magical yeah uh kind of fallout vibes to it you have zombies and then you have feral zombies yeah and like the and, and it shows the the different I guess level of like what you can eventually become and like losing every shred of humanity basically. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought, like how they have the single heartbeat and they come back to life a yeah, little bit. And I'm like, oh my god! It also reminds me of the Grinch uh, a little bit. Like, <laughs> remember when he like uh, I don't know his heart, hell yeah his heart grows like for whatever. Um, and also I. I want to say that uh, he ends up killing her dad or whatever, and he lives in this. So I thought that that was weird too. Mm. Uh, like, I'm like, yeah, kill the dad. Um, but the coming back to life thing because of love, well, I feel like movies do this all the time, especially like um, supernatural movies, like love saves you. Yeah. Uh, and that's a pretty big like expectation <laughs> to put on somebody. Like, I don't know. I don't think that love is saving but i've never liked anything dead no yeah maybe it's the toxic boyfriend that the girl falls in love with that she shouldn't be with and the father's the evil one and that's who they have to, you know got to get rid of the father so it's, <laughs> it's kind of a toxic movie if you're a dad because like <laughs> fuck that dude i'd kill that zombie trying to fuck my daughter what's wrong with you also she totally does a whole she changes him like she's like she literally waits for him to change i I'm, I'm teaching my daughter that 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 piece of shit will always be a piece of shit mm -hmm. don't fall for disney movies they don't change that's what i teach my daughter that's what he teaches his daughter i didn't like that he instantly killed her previous boyfriend like she uh, like they're in a room they're looking for medical supplies or whatever and then a bunch of zombies burst through the door her boyfriend shoots him on the shoulder with a rifle, and so he instantly eats her boyfriend and eats his brains. And I thought it was <laughs> cool how they made the brains look. It it didn't look like brains. It looked like he was eating tripe. Like, it was weird and, yeah. like, uh, kind of, like, not as gory as I thought it would be, like, as a brain or whatever, but I guess it's, like, matter. But then the whole, like, seeing the memories was cool because that's, like, how he falls in love with her. It's almost like he didn't have a choice. Yeah. If he would have, like, eaten somebody who was in love with, like, a dude, he would have been in love with a dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't know that part. So he kills the boyfriend, eats the brains, feels those feelings because he ate the boyfriend's yeah like brain. he starts seeing all their memories together like the boyfriend like it's uh he's yeah. like in love with her and like he sees all of their memories and then he's like i'm in love with this girl and then he like how sees did she her. get over watching her boyfriend be eaten so i don't think quickly. she sees it i guess they just had such it. a lovely time in that airplane together because <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't think she sees him yeah eat him and I don't think he's able to tell. Oh my God. And she's just like, Oh, I love it. But like he ate your dude. No, yeah, yeah. not even twenty four hours and already you're like but let's play patty cake. You know why? Yeah. <laughs> you know why? Because he's different. You know what I mean? Girls always want the guy that's like different or mad like the magical And side. the other guy my dad liked. There's something about him. Yeah. My theory is that it's because these movies themselves are written and produced uh, by people that have probably never heard no in their life that, you mm -hmm. know, like they're a writer, they live in LA, like in Beverly Hills. Dad is a, owns the share of Sony or is the chairman of 
MG and whatever meant <laughs> fucking studio and you know yeah they totally are just like disconnected but it was <laughs> I, a good soundtrack so I, the message is kill the boyfriend kill the dad get the girl <laughs> yeah it's get well yeah get yeah. rid of everybody don't that take no she financial. loves that yeah. she trusts and that she feels secure around and then you move in <laughs> damn yeah that's pretty good advice i mean honestly isolation is an abusive tactic <laughs> yeah we all were in isolation so no wonder we're all messed up <laughs> yeah abused by society itself <laughs> i can't wait to see those numbers of like how many people split up during covid oh yeah well, those lawyers split up are making, and come back or even those lawyers are making good money divorce lawyers uh okay well i mean i liked warm bodies if you yeah. haven't okay if you haven't seen the movie watch the movie yeah but like if you haven't read the book read the book it's so good i actually somebody stole it from me like a co-worker yeah uh he was like i don't really like to read what what would you recommend uh pool and i was like uh here read this book it's super good i felt like i finished it in two days and then he stole it and i don't remember his name but we worked together at homes so if you stole my book and you happen to watch the show at minute whatever we're at. Um, I want it back. <laughs> or else. Or else. You, they're going to find a warm body. <laughs> it's going to be yours. Uh, or I guess a cold body, right? I don't know. Love footage of Michael Sarah freaking out at movie sets and going off and being all entitled. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah, well, that, was, uh, what, that was a gag between, uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy who, who, who writes, Seth, Seth Rogen. Uh-huh. That, that they would film those in between, like that him going <laughs> off, because he, apparently he was such a nice guy that they just thought it was hilarious <laughs> to have If he him. would lose his shit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and so it's not real, like, when yeah, he does it? Like, uh, He's got that Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Yeah. Hyde about him, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I love him. And he does it really is, well. And this is the end when uh -huh. he's like, uh, all Who in the bathroom. Who stole my phone? Oh. <laughs> Who stole my phone? And also the Coke thing, you know. Oh, where he's getting head and getting his ass eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's the, what, can you think of anything you've done to impress a girl? Uh, obviously not uh, arson. I don't think I've ever done arson. I'm trying uh... to think what I've done to impress a boy. This one time I knew this guy, I really liked him and he was like obsessed with Nirvana and I went to Barnes and Nobles and I spent my hard earned money. Like I used to make five fifteen an hour. Let me just specify that as like working in a movie theater, not very much money. And so there was this Nirvana live album mm -hmm. that they sold at Barnes and Nobles and it was like $45 and I bought it for him and he cried. <laughs> it was pretty tight. That's pretty, I, that's a, probably the most I've gone out, out of my way for someone. Yeah. Like ever. And then we never even kissed. We like nuzzled. He was the guy that we used to nuzzle. <laughs> the one that you think is gay. I didn't say he was gay. I yeah, just... you did. You were like, he likes Sam, not. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah when yeah. you explained that whole situation, you're yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. I used to stalk him too. Look at healthy stalking. I guess that's another thing I did. That's bad. My girlfriend is a domestic violence counselor and uh, she takes those hotline calls and she has like a little chart that has different forms of abuse. Like there's financial abuse, there's isolation, there's Damn. physical threats. Uh, lots of abusers will drive aggressively for some reason. Yeah, because I think they like the control of the large vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> like, I will crash this car. Um, is Narcissists it, are very entertaining people. They're lots. They've got lots of stories to tell. They like talking about themselves. Yeah, who doesn't like talk? I love talking about myself. <laughs> Shit, I'm a narcissist. Yeah. Damn, what a bummer. I mean, if you do stand up, I mean, you're everybody's a bit of a narcissist if you do stand yeah. up. Yeah, definitely the ego id. People uh, accused me of being bipolar forever, but it turned out I'm just a vanilla depressed person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say I'm a depressed person, but I think that's like inherent with stand up, yeah. right? Like, isn't that like seeking validation or whatever? That's like part of it. Yeah. It's kind of like why I like school sometimes too, because I like getting praise. I like being good at something. Oh, I didn't yeah. like it. I didn't like it when I was in it the first time, but I like college, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, when you said that your girlfriend has a chart, yeah, is it circular? Because you yeah. made it sound like it's like uh, uh, the the C and say like I guess you, you could could just like <laughs> turn it or sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, it's like a like a pie chart with like well, like a pizza, I guess. 
Oh, and so you're like, you're like, oh, shit. Uh, yeah. Oh, he's driving recklessly. And then you like go to that and then it tells you what to do. I can tell you that uh, most abusers don't change psychologically. That's something I've heard a lot. We uh, talked about this on here before. Like, do you think people can change? Uh, no. I don't, I don't think <laughs> People so can either. get corrupted and become worse, but I don't think people can change. I think at the root of them, they're still the same. Yeah. Like, I can do all the yoga in the world, but I'm still going to get mad if something goes wrong. <laughs> you have to have the capacity to do things, to haul off and do things. Like, for someone that's often getting in fights, I don't know if I would trust them very much. Or <laughs> Yeah. Someone that's, like, easily angered. So, I think yeah. if somebody goes through, like, a life-changing situation, whether it's, like, a near-death experience or yeah. somebody close to you, you know, passes on, that could change That definitely your, changes you. Changes your mentality. I mean, at the core... You're still going to be close to the same person, but you can yeah. have a different perspective as that person. Yeah, like an ide an ideology of like uh, life. So you know like I mean? you start thinking about what's important to you. Usually yeah, exactly. when something big happens, you yeah. start to prioritize. I, I would say that that did happen to me. Like my mom died a few years ago and I was like, oh, shit, I want certain things and I'm not doing them. I should probably do them. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I was like, oh, I've been uh, procrastinating on living my life. But for most people without that trigger, I don't think they... It, they do how, anything, yeah. How, how, can, how can you change? You have no different perspective to change. I guess yeah. that's a good thing about triggers is that they do move you forward or backward. Yeah. They make you react. Yes. That's their basis. But I've never, like, changed... Up, that's a lie. I was gonna say I've never changed for someone like Michael Sarah did. Like I, I don't. I. What are you talking about? You're all about hats now. I do. That was my <laughs> hair. I like hats. Listen, the hat is rude. Okay, I can wear a hat. Like, I didn't say you can. Okay. I'm just saying you changed. You're I all about hats. I didn't change. I'm not all about hats. I have two hats. How many hats do you have? Uh, I think. 16 last count jesus see. he's a skater though he has to have a lot oh, of oh yeah yeah you have to I've, I've got hats from companies that are defunct i've got hats that are probably worth thousands uh this is from the 90s i think i think uh, that's where this graphic comes from hmm i have two <laughs> how many hats do you have josh uh in rotation right now three what do you mean in rotation? Uh, I have my hat that I wear at the gym. I have this hat that I wear all the time, even in the shower. And then I have my other hat when I can't find this hat. And sometimes I have a little hat. Yeah, I got a little hat. <laughs> uh, cool. I have two. So I would say I have not changed that much. Uh, I was trying to think if I had ever changed for like a boy I definitely pretended to like certain bands that I didn't know who they were. And then I had oh, to God. do like. Yeah, I've had to what, listen to all kinds of screamo and. Yeah. Techno uh, screamo. And, and then have to like look up all the bands before you hang out with them. Oh, yeah. And then if they ask you like, oh, do you know blah, blah. I used to have some guys would like be like, oh, have you ever heard of. And they would say like a specific song on a specific like <laughs> album. And then I'd be like, yeah, 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 sure. That shit hurts. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Like. People's cultural identities are very important to them, and people tend to take in other people that have similar, like... So when I was growing up, it was really hard because, like, everybody was ar around me was into Screamo, or they liked the chopped and screwed local rap, and... Yeah. You know, and I'm listening to stuff from, like, the 60s and 70s, and people would hurl all kind of shit at me. And What's Screamo? Screamo is that, like, metalcore where they're screaming animalistically, the rap. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like it, it became super popular. All of a sudden, all of my friends were in um, screamo bands. What's up, Garden of the Worms? San I thought that Green Day album fucking sucked in 2004 with the Boulevard of Broken Dreams. I don't really remember it, <laughs> so probably. There became a certain time when I stopped listening to the radio. Yeah. I think it was around the time like Napster was like a big thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was the other one? Where you would get all your downloads from when we started, when we all started stealing music. Yeah. I stopped listening to the radio after I bought chocolate starfish and I was like, what am I doing? Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> like you just start. Then it was all about like collecting CDs and then, and then it became about collecting like fucking MP3 yeah. players. And then, 
increasing your music and i, I think know. what's toxic about youth and revolt is that he creates this like macho man alter ego and so we're kind of telling young men that it's cool to be like a quippy witty dickhead that's like hurling insults and stuff and, and treating everyone not like afraid shit. to fucking like yeah exactly yeah because women want to be treated like shit <laughs> like i feel like we do we not, do that, not, not treat like shit direct no he's be, not is he being direct like be, when he's finished with his food and he just like fucking well, knocks no, that's, it over but that's not towards the girl that's being mm. aggressive towards her the, no the the mom's boyfriend he's uh, trying to prove i'm the alpha here not you oh, but okay. with the girl he's being very direct well what do you want what are you looking for i want to see what's under them sheets and it's like <laughs> god you pervert but she was like all right i guess so yeah but he is kind of like like it, you, you do see his like character because he's treating everyone else like shit, but then he's like, yeah, he's being direct with her, so he's still kind of like a piece of shit. <laughs> like, is honesty is honesty being a piece of shit? Uh, um, I I think honesty is good, especially if we're talking about sex and consent and things like yeah. that. Yeah, I do. I do like to give permission before and someone's you, inside of me. Well, no, but I'm saying by being direct, if she was like, well, no, get away, then he would have been like. Well, hopefully he would have been like, okay, and walked away. But I think I'm, there's something to be said about someone that doesn't pussyfoot around hitting on someone. Like if you're yeah. just like, uh, uh, can I, uh, the or fact if that you're you like, said, the fact that you said pussyfoot, pussyfoot. is very <laughs> toxic. I just want to let you know that. <laughs> Listen, that's the appropriate word. When guys like don't make a move and they make it all weird, it's kind of annoying. Like if you like someone like make a move don't be like don't be like woo, woo, woo. okay bye and then you're like yeah bye uh, that was weird are you okay how are you doing are you yeah okay? yeah yeah like uh just uh i guess be more i guess i get the direct thing she probably mm -hmm. is like down for it because he didn't sound uh hesitant he wasn't like Ooh, you know like i don't know i don't know how to sound hesitant like what would a guy say if they didn't know what they were doing just like that Ooh. <laughs> do you want to fuck or like like they'd just be like no Can I, never uh should i get a condom or i don't know should i lock the door that, that's the creepiest thing you could say at the beginning should hey, i lock the door should i lock the door <laughs> for what because i'm gonna get a condom do you want to have sex god dang do you remember having like you remember being young and having sex in like weird places no like because you were like young and you didn't have a house oh some car sex here and there oh yeah. you mean like location not yeah. like places not, not like and... not like anal josh oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm saying like like you when you were little and you you shouldn't have been having sex like a teen not little jesus christ uh yeah some weird places nope only <laughs> beds missionary the way god intended really not bathroom floors or closet what? floors no you you both say a prayer <laughs> And then missionary uh, sex. Do not look each other in the eye. Keep your pants on. Car sex in a Ford Escort <laughs> was annoying. I would never, I don't, I think now, especially, I would never change for anybody. Uh, I wouldn't change my whole how to approach uh, being a person, which is essentially what he does. And also, does that mean he's like mentally ill if he's like literally looking at himself from outside of himself? Yeah. Yeah. I won't change for anybody just because it makes things more simplistic, you know, like I can, I'll be me and I've got hobbies and interests and stuff. I like resident evil. I like skateboarding. I like stand up. I like dope. I like underground hip hop and stuff. But like, it's like, if you don't like that and that's unattractive to you, maybe that is for the better that you like, let me go or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, uh, I feel like if things are over, people should let each other yeah. go. Like, that's a good rule of thumb. Like, if you guys aren't in each other, let each other go. Don't punish each other. That sounds terrible. I remember my brother told me one time, he was like, Warren, you tend to go for a specific type of woman. And I was like, well, what do you mean by that? And Oh, yeah. <laughs> what's what's the specific type? I don't know. But I just, I, I told him that, like, well, in order for sex to happen, there's a thing called consent. And that just uh, happens to be the kind of people that like me, you know, like. <laughs> the ones that say yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, that's a good segue to talk about our last movie, I guess. <laughs> uh, what is the last movie? Uh, Better Off Dead. It's about a young man in 1985 and his 
girlfriend leaves him, I guess, because he doesn't have a car and <laughs> he's like a loser or whatever. And she goes for like a popular like skier instead. And he wants to be a professional skier and oh, he meets a yeah. French foreign exchange student and he but falls this... in love with the French girl and he decides to restore his old car and. Oh, look, a French girl. See, we just had a movie with a French guy and then. <laughs> Oh, Teen Wolf, I love that movie. Hey. Was there a flashing scene in this movie? I also love One Crazy Summer. You remember movies by the tits in them. Well, I think these might have been yeah, the first tits I've ever seen. Yeah, no, I'm take we it haven't talked about Better Off Dead, have we? No, no, no. I'll... Better Off Dead. Does John to... Cusack regrets the fuck out of that movie. If you want to piss him off, bring up Better Off Dead around him. <laughs> really? Yeah. What does he say about it? I don't know. Well, it was like a self-produced thing. Like I guess it was like like a a student film or something. And oh, okay. like one of his first projects or whatever. I love John Cusack. Uh, oh, yeah. He does. I used to follow him on Twitter, and he used to get super self-referential about everything. Like well, just very. For those of the people in the audience who don't know what that means, maybe you should explain. Uh, so he would get very like preachy about wow. what he knows and how he was like sort of the authority on it, kind of thing. And he was very political for a minute, and I was just like, okay, this is a lot, John Cusack. Uh, so I had to like unfollow. It was almost like if, uh, what is that other guy's name? Sean, um, Penn, Penn had a, a, a Twitter. <laughs> That's what it reminded me of. I was uh, like, I wouldn't be able to follow Sean Penn, which I don't know if he has a Twitter because I would never be able to follow. Like he's just really intense. Like he's an intense person. Uh, um, but this movie, I, I kind of remember I was little and I think I saw it like on TBS. Yeah. Um, the, the, the French girl was super pretty. I don't remember. I don't see her. I didn't see her in the trailer, but she was super pretty. I remember that. Um, and I remember that this came out like around the same time as that other suicide movie with the radio. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Um, there was this movie called talk hard with Christian Slater and, uh, it was another movie like with everybody killing himself. And then that other movie that where everybody all the Heathers, Heathers killed themselves. This girl? Um, yeah. <laughs> I thought she was pretty. Yeah. Hello. She also looks kind of like somebody. Um, do they end up together? I, I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they, like, make out on the empty baseball field. Somehow they got their car into a baseball stadium. Curtis Armstrong. You know who that is? I think he's the, the, the no, that's not uh, him. This guy was in it. Dan Schneider, who's that? Uh, Dan Schneider was, uh, uh, you know what? I I've heard Scooter it. Stevens. <laughs> I, I I don't want to even say the rumor because I don't I, I haven't looked it up and made sure it's true. But apparently he's like a pedophile. What? Oh no! Yeah, and he and he created a bunch of these uh, um, Nick Jr. and Nickelodeon shows, and he was all about feet. So he has like uh, Ariana Grande and all these other. Uh, uh, actresses that were on there and they all have like they put their feet up to the camera or they're sucking their toes who on did the he show. play in that movie was Are he you the sure fast the right food owner yeah. or uh, he, he was Ricky, Ricky Smith. Smith who's that click on it and see see that he like with, anyway who is why was Schneider cancelled in 1998 Schneider began his career at Shona the series I don't know, to low ratings and poor review uh, what happened with Dan Schneider and Amanda Bynes? <laughs> what? But uh, who, who was his character in Better Off Dead? I don't remember. Because if he was the fast food uh, burger chain he was owner, that fast, would be really funny. Think, oh, yeah, because he was in Good Burger. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that's right. I think you have it right. <laughs> like he likes it was that one. Oh, yeah, that's him right. perfectly. Yeah, that's him. Oh, so, oh no! So he's not the the guy who owns the hamburger joint. I was like thinking of another character, cousin or something. Or yeah, <laughs> I think Josh has the story wrong, but yeah. well, we'll we'll say he's a pedophile. Fuck it, <laughs> right? He can be a pedophile. Everybody can be a pedophile. Uh, See what I mean? He's the one he produced all these. Oh my god. Oh no. Ew. Josh, 
always knows the grossest things about people. I guess it is better to know them. I wouldn't want yeah. something yeah. like that to be up in the air. Know your enemy. <laughs> And then this is like, uh, this is part of the Josh curriculum of how to raise women to know their enemy. Yes. <laughs> and it's good advice, honestly, because there are going to be times when men asks for like pics of your feet and you have to make a choice as a woman. <laughs> are you the girl that's going to sell those pics or are you the girl that's going to shame them for asking you? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I'm sure there are more options, but yeah. I definitely have, uh, I have said no to several feet pick requests from strangers for, from, for money. Uh, you know, I didn't realize about the money situation until like after I had already said no. And then like, I was going to like go back and be like, what if you paid me? And they blocked yeah. me. They blocked me. They, uh, they didn't wait for me. In the Wild West days, women were so scarce that they would sell their underwear to pervs and stuff and make lots of money off of it. That's kind of like a thing that still happens. Yeah. Like certain porn stars sell their underwear after wearing it. Uh, you know this, right, Josh? Like I'm not the oh. only one that knows this. Uh, they do that. Here's in... my yeast. It's <laughs> for you. <laughs> Gross. Uh, it's her insides. Blech. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. I'd have to take a hard pass. Uh, I think that some men are, I don't know if you guys know this, um, into some stuff. Oh, yeah. Obviously, Josh, you would not sell your feet pics, right? Nobody, what about nobody would want to buy my feet pics. Well, I mean, maybe. If somebody if they, wants my feet pics to jack off to, 20 bucks, bro. There you go. We're going to have a 20 Josh's. 20 bucks. You can't uh, come on my feet, Venmo but I'll take a right picture. Here. Uh, scrolling. I'll send it to you. Right here, we'll have Josh's Venmo for feet pics. Twenty size bucks. twelve. They're flat. I think there's athletes foot on the pinky. So <laughs> always a touch of that. We'll we're gonna go to twenty five for the athlete's foot uh, that you will probably get. It's been peeling for five years. I don't know what it is. <laughs> uh, I've got a Taylor's bunion. Sometimes I step on a nerve on my foot, and it's very painful. Uh, I don't know what that is. I'm gonna look it up now. <laughs> Taylor's bunion. bunion. Why do they call it Taylor's bunion? Is that like a, what a tailor does when the they like, uh, I don't know, tail shoes. It's My feet are does. probably fucked up from skateboarding, all that jumping oh, off of yeah. shit. It's just the end of it right here. Yeah. So it's like broken or something? Yeah. Misalignment of your bones. Ooh. Oh, yeah, they give you the foam so it's softer to walk on. Oh, to separate the pinky toe from the other toe. See, because yeah. it goes in like that. But there's things you can do. You can wear high art shoes or you can put gel in shirts. In and, yeah. That's uh, why I like Pumas. Pumas are super soft. Yeah. Nurses tend to get them a lot from being on their foot all day. And Nurses be working. Not with Crocs. Oh, yeah. I should have been a nurse. Ugh, <laughs> wasted potential. Um, it's never too late, Tori. Shut up. Do your best. I'm trying, <laughs> Dad. <laughs> Josh always tells me to do my best before I go on stage, like if we're on a same show. And, and I don't mean that by like, do your best, try your hardest. I mean, like, do your best material. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought he meant it like in a caring father figure way the first time he told me. And not, I don't really have like a father figure. So I was like, oh. Yeah. And then he was like, no, I mean, your best material. <laughs> and I was like, what a fucking asshole. Uh, but I did. I did that night. So that was good. Um, so, I mean, it has its benefits. But now I find myself telling people like, do your best. and uh, But people don't. Uh, they think I'm sarcastic when I'm positive yeah i guess because i look mean um i don't know i try not to uh i was gonna say something i have you ever um gotten hit on by somebody that doesn't speak english uh yeah maybe uh i used to work at saint dane's bar and that was right in midtown in houston and there was like international hostels and mm -hmm. i don't know Maybe somebody would just be super sweet when they ordered and stuff. Or. <laughs> yeah. This one time I uh, went to Paris uh, on a trip for students. It was like a training trip or whatever. And we, it was with, like a four day weekend. But I obviously don't speak um, French. Mm -hmm. And I was down at the like hotel bar and the bartender kept like, like hitting on me, but I didn't know, but like I suspected he was hitting on me. Yeah. And I was like, is he hitting on me? Cause I can't really tell, you know? And I was like, why is he so close to me? 
Um, and then I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go to bed or whatever. And he was like, oh, okay, blah. And then I went to bed and I was like staying with someone and then somebody knocked on the door and I was like, holy shit. Like he found out my room number Creepy. and like, yeah. And he was like talking and he's like, I have your whiskey. Like suddenly he spoke English and he's like, I have your Jameson or whatever. And I was just like, uh, go away, dude. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, and you were with your students? No, I was with another teacher who was snoring very loudly. And we were only in oh, Paris for a few days. If she would have woken up, I'd be like, what? <laughs> <Man, fuck." laughs> She'd be like, let him in. Let's we're, tag team this. Uh, but yeah, I did. I was I was not into it. I thought that was weird because I didn't give any intention yeah. that I was into it. And then suddenly he was like, I have whiskey. I have your Jameson. And I'm like... I didn't order that bitch. Those aggressive French guys, huh? They're in the super. movies, would how did you believe that shit works? Like, yeah, <laughs> especially if it was an '80s movie. Yeah. Why is she being mean? Let him in. Yeah. Okay, I'll do just it in suspend the bathroom. my belief that this desperate man making all these <laughs> white knight pleas uh, yeah. with me, <laughs> holding well, alcohol probably with drugs in it. Exactly. But yeah. if I go to the logic of what we were saying earlier, where I'm like, oh, but if he's like bold in his intention, then obviously I should have been like, yeah, uh, but he was bold. And I was like, no. Well, that's a different kind of bold. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, no, no. It is a very different bold. Like I was in a fucking foreign country and didn't speak the language. And to find your room. Yeah. And to find my room when I didn't offer my room. Yeah. So. Aw, missed opportunity. I could have had some French dick. Oh, <laughs> uh, I guess I, that's a way to see it. I think that's a good uh, place to end. Uh, <laughs> French dick, uh, which is also good with a baguette. Oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, a baguette. You don't like the baguette? Okay. Uh, is it baguette? You know, the French eat more steak than any other culture in the world. And they drink the most wine. <laughs> Uh, which means high cholesterol. Okay. Mm. Um, but yeah, this has been the episode of Toxic Actually number six. Seis, uh, right. which is six in Spanish. Um, and my guest Thanks has been for having me. Warren Wright. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for coming. And also, we're going to like have uh, his stuff here uh, down here. It's for the Instagram. And are you on Twitter? Any Twitter to plug or anything like that? Mainly Instagram, no, right? I, yeah, I've only got Instagram. And it's the comedy and skateboarding. And I've been so happy that you came and talked to me about movies. And uh, yeah, it was super fun. Thanks. Uh, thank you, guys. We'll see you later. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.